Hey guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you what I've been working on this week. I know not everyone makes it to the end of the video, so I have a few things I want to talk about first, and then I'll show you what I've been working on. I did post these already in the community tab, and you guys can obviously see what they are, but we'll talk about those in a minute. Thank you for all the lovely comments about Miss Mocha and her little playfulness and her purring and stuff. Someone had asked to see more of my cats in the videos and stuff. They've come in and out of videos here and there. So I thought, oh, well, this is a perfect timing. Let me go ahead and make the video because she's just rolling around on the table being adorable. But then a comment came through and another comment came through and then my head started going and I started to overthink things. And I just want to clear up a couple things. I did put a little pinned comment down below. But just for people who haven't seen the comments, I want you all to know... Yes, I sell things in my Etsy shop that I create, but I do not let Miss Mocha or any of the other cats roll around or get anywhere near the fabric that I use for selling items. I don't sew and create for the shop every day, so when I do, I come through and I take a Clorox wipe and I clean down the table and I vacuum up all the loose threads and the fur off the floor and the cats aren't allowed in here when I'm creating. And they're definitely, if they sneak in, they're not allowed on the table while I'm doing anything. And when I leave the room, I make sure the door is shut just because I wanna be very conscientious about what could be getting onto that fabric. When I'm making one of these wallets, I'm definitely not going to be washing this before I send it out because I want it to look nice and crisp in the basically brand new fabric because I don't pre-wash my fabric. I know many of you already know, but all of my fabric is stored in a separate room that is kept closed all the time. The cats aren't allowed in there at all. I also take anything that I make for the shop. It goes into a Rubbermaid tub and it's covered up with a couple of towels. That way, even though there's a lot of light blocking curtains up and the room is dark all the time, one, nothing will be faded from the sunlight. Two, they can't get dusty because they're in a bin and covered up with towels. And three, the cats have zero access to it. They're not able to get into the room to get into the fabric, nor to anything that's ready to go into the shop. I know you guys, most of you understand that, and most of you aren't worried because you have your own cats, but I just feel better getting that out into the world, okay? The other thing is I had a request to put up an Amazon wish list, and several people said, yes, please put up a wish list. So I spent some time this week and I made an Amazon wish list. It should be linked down below in the description box, but here's the thing. I always have a thing because I always worry. I don't ever want to f anyone to feel bad or anything like that. I never want anyone to come to my channel and have their feelings hurt. Definitely not on purpose. If I do it accidentally, I apologize. But here's the thing. The wish list is there. I have put several things on it. Most of them are craft related, although I did put some jigsaw puzzles and a really cool comb for the cats that I just have had it on my wish list and I just haven't purchased it myself yet. I have some lower price items and I don't think there's anything on there that's very expensive. I did put some rulers on, so I thought these rulers would be fun to test out and do for some tutorials. That Amazon wish list is just there if anyone wishes to purchase something. You do not have to. But here's the thing. If you want to and you find something that's less expensive somewhere else online or you can use a coupon at Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whatever, you don't have to purchase it from Amazon. It's just an easy reference point for you guys to see it. If you already have one of the rulers or a book or the puzzle or anything or, that I put on that list, you can just send it if you'd like. You don't have to purchase it. So if you accidentally bought two or three of the same quilting rollers, because none of us would do that, right? I can see three of the small Dresden rulers right now from where I'm at. I did put a really long Dresden ruler on because I saw some really fun, scrappy Christmas tree skirts that I like to try. Now I know there's ways you can extend a Dresden ruler and do it without purchasing a new ruler, but a new ruler just makes it so much easier. So if you ever have anything in your stash and your supply, like I mentioned, if you have extra rulers or some type of a tool and you'd like to send it, I would really appreciate that because then we can do a tutorial on it and maybe I might come up with something new or a different way to use it that you aren't aware of yet. Or you could tell us a new way to use it and I can go ahead and do a tutorial for it. But if that wish list just sits there and nothing ever gets purchased on it, I'm fine with that too. It is not that a big deal. If I purchase anything along the way, I'll make sure I take it off the list and anything that comes in, I'll take it off the list, but it's there for anyone who's asked for it. 
And if you think there's something else that I should add to my list, go ahead and let me know down below in the comments if you think it's something that we as this scrappy fabric community here would love to use. I'll go ahead and add that to the wish list too. All right, let's get on to what I've worked on. As you can see, I have these fabric letters here. They are made out of fabric and I've got some flannel and there's batting in there. So this is going to be the tutorial coming up for this Friday. I, of course, I've made the entire alphabet. I just picked up some of my fabric out of the scrap bin in my novelty fabrics. I do have a few solids that I grabbed, but there was just these little bits and pieces. You can make these with charm packs. I go over all of that in the video, but here is the entire alphabet. Everybody's got the same fabric on the back. I like how some of them, where is one of my favorites? I love the X because it's got a monkey there in the center. And I love this guy. I don't know, I, I'm not really into the flowers and all, but there's something about this fabric with that yellow background with the fabrics popping off of it that I really love. Now, one of you guys, I believe, has sent me this fabric or scrap of it. So some of you guys may recognize some of this fabric and some of it I've just pulled out of a drawer that I've had for years. Now I think that's all that I did in the sewing department this week. I've run some errands, done a little shopping. Poor Miss Mocha had a tummy ache and I had to spend a few hours with her at the vet. Thank goodness she's perfectly fine. The vet just thinks either she just has a little bit of a tummy trouble this week or she might have eaten a creature that came into the house like a, a lizard or a spider or something because my cats are all hunters or huntresses hunteress huntress my cats like to hunt so anything that comes into the house they're gonna pounce on now normally they just play with it but cats play with things and they unfortunately die so she's getting better she's feeling better today and by the time you see this on wednesday i'm sure she'll be back to her normal selves so I did shoot a few videos. Some of them you'll see on my patron page for my patrons. They get a video every Sunday. Others of them, like the tutorial for the letters, I worked on that. And I did start a video for those of you who wanted to see the miter square blanket. I do have a beginning video talking about the yarn and the supplies and stuff like that. So that will be coming up in March. So you'll see that also, and we'll start doing that. But I've worked on my socks. So this sock was way down here the last time you saw it last month. I do have the heel done. And I started knitting up on the leg. I have a little bit of the ball left and I just wanna see how far, I want each of them to have the same length legs. So depending on how much yarn is left, once I get my next one up to, I think this is probably about 15 rows. Once I get this sock into the same position, I'll probably just do a couple rows back and forth on each sock till they match up and then I will put the cuffs on. So this sock was way down here. So again, I finished the heel on this one today. I thought I only had one skein of this yarn. And when I was cleaning in the fabric room, I found the other skein. So there was two of them, but my feet aren't as large as Robbie's, so I don't need an entire one. As long as I have some toes and cuffs in a contrast color, it comes out perfectly fine. I don't, my foot isn't as wide and it's not as, I don't like my socks as tall as Robbie. I did, I'm still working on my perfect sock measurements and I found that I'm doing the 56 stitches. I have tried the 64, which is too big and the 56, which is too small. I could pick a size in between just because I'm doing vanilla socks so I can kind of do whatever I want. But I think I'm gonna try a larger needle first to see, because these fit just just barely a little tiny bit snug so if I go up a needle size it's going to make it just a little bit bigger but I want to make sure that I still have a nice firm fabric that I'm knitting so we'll see I'll just have to make myself another pair of socks it'll be such a tragedy so these will be almost done I just I have this much left on this one so as I said I will knit a bunch of the leg these are obviously not matchy matchy But they're okay, and and I say they're okay because I just don't understand, I still don't understand these colors 
mixed in. Now, without this, this yellowy, green, dirty, whatever color, it's not a beige, and it's not a green, and it's not a yellow. It's just something all mixed together. When it doesn't have all of this in it, and it's just like this, I don't mind that sock. I really kind of like it. But just, I just, not, I don't fancy that color, and that's okay. Their socks are going to keep my feet warm in the winter, and that's really all that matters. You've seen the one sleeve of my sweater, and I wanted to have the second one done before I made this video, but I just didn't quite get to it. This is where I was last time I showed you, so I have done a lot. I've made it past all of the increasing. I just have to make sure that I have 44 rows after this green stitch marker, and I have them in 10, so I have 10, 20, 30, I have like 33. So I need, this one will mark off my last 10 and then I'll have to do four. So once I hit 44, this will be done. And I don't cast them off, I just put them on waist yarn. Because as I mentioned before, I will be combining the sleeve into the actual part of the sweater and you knit it all together so there's no, you don't have to sew anything together. So we're getting there. Pretty much when this ball of yarn is gone, then the sleeve will be done. And I've been working on my striped scarf. So we were here last and now up to here. I'm really starting to think, I don't know. It's hard to tell how much is yarn left, how much yarn is left in a skein. So this is the Red Heart Super Saver in the Polo Stripe. I do really love these colors and I love the, the broken rib texture of the scarf. I'm just hoping that it's going to be long enough before I run out of yarn. Because if I buy another ball of yarn, another skein of yarn, I'm going to feel like I need to knit the entire one again. So it would be a super long scarf. And actually, when this one's done, I've I fulfilled my need of knitting this type of scarf and I want to move on to something else. I could weigh that, bo that skein of yarn and see what's left because right now this is probably about... It's about halfway done, a little bit short of halfway. I do the thing where you hold your arm all the way out and if the, the, the arm span from the tip of the fingers to the tip of the fingers from left to right hand, that's usually about the height of a person. So once I get it to be that long, then I'm usually pretty good. I do like to make them around six feet if possible. We'll see, we'll see. So that's all I've been working on this week. I hope you guys have had a very creative week. Let us know down in the comments which projects you've been working on. And I hope they've all been going well. We have reached the end of the video, so now we need a code word. For those that are new to the channel or who haven't always watched it to the end of the video, at the end I've been adding a code word, something that I picked up from Karen's Puzzles, where it allows me to know those people that have watched the videos all the way to the end. You are a super fan and you are a Whip It Wednesday master. So this week's code word, I'm just going to go something simple and we'll do stripes because I love this stripey yarn and I love the stripes on this scarf. So thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hi, I was sitting down to edit the Whip It Wednesday video when I realized, oh, I totally forgot I have to give you guys the me measurements and the fabric requirements and such for the live stream on Saturday, March 6th, 2021 at noon, Eastern Standard Time. We are going to be making the scrappy version of the baskets that I showed you on a recent tutorial. Now you've got the measurements from a last week's tutorial, so it's basically going to be the same. We're going to make the lining based on whatever size the front of our basket is. So if you have a fat quarter, you can usually get the lining out of that. We're going to have two pieces of fabric. I don't want you to cut any of this fabric yet until we get started, because a lot of it's going to be determined based on how wide and with the size of your scrappy strips and all that. I don't want you to cut this piece and this piece until we know how wide our little scrappy pieces are together. If you don't have a perfect quarter inch seam, this measurement is going to be different than my measurement, different from someone else's measurement, and it could be different every time you sew it. So we're not going to have exact measurements, but in general terms, the lining is 10 by 16 and a half. But again, just grab a fat quarter and then, or piece of fabric that is going to measure at least 10 by 16 and a half. I would up it up by about an inch or two on each side if you're going totally from scraps because again we don't know what size the front of our bag is going to be. Now this strip here we can use a gray if you have a gray fat quarter or any type of whatever color scheme you're using a fat quarter is going to do perfectly for this this and if you want you can use it for the handle but 
It's going to be the width of our piece of scrap strips here. But in the last basket, the inside and the outside were the same, 10 by 16 and a half. So if you have that size fabric, we can do that. We can always trim down our scrappy strip a little bit if we have to. 16 two and a half inch squares for the front and 16 for the back. So a total of 32. Mix and match them up. I do have duplicates of several of them. I put some on the front and some on the back. So like this one only has one, but the other ones have two or three of them, depending on how you want to do it. And each scrap one is different. So some baskets I did use two or three and some baskets I only used one. It all depends on the scraps you have. If you have fabric and you're cutting out of fat quarters, you can go ahead and do that also. It's going to work out the same. If you use a fat quarter for the gray portion, what I used is a gray fabric here, you can also use that for the handle. Otherwise, our handles are going to measure, depending on how long you want them, so you want them to be about eight to 10 inches long. So if you get a piece of fabric in whatever color you want, and you have a piece of fabric that's five inches by 12 inches, you're going to have plenty for a handle. So for just one handle, so you'll need that times two. As I was making these, a lot of these, are, it's just determined on what fabric I had and what would work. Sometimes my handles are eight inches long, sometimes they're a little bit longer. If I only had a piece of fabric that I really wanted to use, and maybe it was only seven inches long, I went ahead and used that. You just need to be able to put your hands in the handle, or you can skip the handle completely and not even use it. You can use it to match the inside of your fabric, or you can match it to the outside. It's all going to be whatever you want. This is a scrappy version, even though it looks very controlled. I really just went into my scrap bin and I went, oh, I like this fabric and this will work. Let's use that. But I know everyone needs to have a little bit of information. One of the things you should cut ahead of time is, or get mini charms, 32 two and a half inch squares. If you're going into your scraps, maybe you might want to cut a few extra because as you're laying this out, you'd be like, hmm, maybe I like it, maybe I don't, maybe I want to mix it up. So you could change things up like that. I like to have extras, it, it doesn't hurt. So the quick rundown, simplest version I can tell you is to have a fat quarter for your lining, a fat quarter for your contrast fabric on the outside, 32, at least 32, two and a half inch squares of fabric. For our handles, we have two of them, obviously. So if you're gonna have handles and you're gonna have two of them, you wanna have two strips of fabric that are at the minimum four inches wide and at the minimum eight inches long. So yeah, I would say maybe if you just grab and scrap something that's five by 12 for each handle, and then you'll be in good shape and you can go ahead and trim it down. I didn't use anything in my handles because I don't feel like this is an actual like tote bag, but you could put some stabilizer in your handles. And then you need the same thing about two fat quarters worth of batting or whatever you want to use for your stabilizer inside your basket here. I have quilters cotton and I just did some simple quilting on it. So whatever you want to use. If you're just pulling out scraps, just go ahead and pull a little extra of everything so that you know you have exactly what you need all around you. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. If you want to refer back to last Friday's tutorial, it'll give you all the requirements for the fabrics there. And then just add in 32 two and a half inch squares. And that should take care of you for the fabric. So I hope you sew along with me Saturday at noon and while we make these scrappy baskets. And if not, I'll see you guys during the replay. Bye.